We are only one day away from the 2020 World Junior Championship to get underway. Now at this tournament, there's going to be all kinds of 2020 NHL draft eligible prospects on display. Today, we're going to take a look at the top seven I feel you should be watching for the most. We'll get into those players coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey and Merry Christmas to everybody around the world watching this video. Now this is being posted on Christmas Day, December the 25th, but it is not being recorded on Christmas Day. I will be taking a break to spend time with friends and family today, uh, but this was pre-recorded a little bit ahead of time. Uh, so hopefully everything still seems relevant here as we go on. It's not really all that far ahead right now, uh, but the World Junior Championships are not far away at all from getting underway. It's a very exciting time of year. Not only do we have all the holidays, and Christmas and New Year's coming up, but this tournament is one of the most exciting times for hockey fans around the world to watch the best junior players go head to head and see who can come out with a gold medal. Now this year we're going to be treated, as I said, to a lot of NHL draft eligible talent that are going to be in the first round of the 2020 NHL draft. And their play in this tournament very well could have a major impact on where they're drafted and what NHL franchises they end up with here in the not too distant future. So as I mentioned today, we're going to take a look at the top seven players I feel you should be looking out for that's going to have a major impact on this tournament as well as the draft rankings as well. Now we're going to kick things off here with some Team Canada draft eligible players. The top two prospects that are expected to go 1-2 in the draft are both Canadian and both will be representing their country in this tournament. Let's kick things off with the projected number one overall pick right now, Alexis Lafreniere, who is a left winger for Team Canada. Of course, he got to go last year to this tournament as well, but certainly played a much smaller role. Uh, and obviously, Team Canada did not do well, did not get anywhere near the medal round. So I'm sure he's going to be motivated uh, not only to get some revenge and get their, to get his country higher up in the standings and get a medal this year, but certainly to solidify himself as the number one overall selection. Now, he's been projected to be first overall in the 2020 draft for a significant period of time, and this is really an opportunity just to kind of really solidify that and kind of eliminate any doubters that might be out there. This will be his second tournament, as I mentioned. Last year, he scored one goal in five games. He's going to be relied upon very heavily on Canada's top line, and he should be very well rested as well, considering he hasn't played a full game in about two weeks' time here. He's been lighting up the QMJHL so far this season and is going to have a chance to really shine on an international big stage here at this tournament. Next up for Team Canada, we have a big center iceman, Quinton Binefield, who's currently projected to go number two overall to 2020 NHL draft. Really, in my opinion, probably the only player right now in that draft who's kind of pushing for the rival Lafreniere as the number one overall selection, although I really don't think that's going to happen. I don't think anything's going to change. I think Byfield will end up going likely number two. I mean, that could possibly change. There are some prospects also in the top five who could possibly rival him that we'll get into here shortly. But he's a really big big powerful center iceman he's really difficult to play against he added his ability to score goals and it makes him a very fun player to watch he's currently third in ohl scoring with 57 points with the sudbury wolves and the canada coaches really like what they saw from during the selection camp he's likely to slot in one of the top two lines and should play a big role and have all kinds of ice time for team canada now, the third member for Team Canada we're going to discuss for the 2020 draft eligible players today is defenseman Jamie Drysdale, who's arguably the best defenseman in this draft. Now, as I've mentioned before, this is not going to be a defense-heavy draft. We're going to see a lot of forwards, mostly centers and wingers, in the top uh, picks of this draft. It's hard to say exactly where Drysdale is going to go, but, but he's been a player that's been on the rise throughout the entire season. Drysdale's a really smooth skating, very intelligent defenseman. He makes good decisions majority of the time. Uh, he's earned himself a roster spot, basically considered the seventh defenseman. But I think Drysdale is one of those players, like we saw with Lafreniere last year, who might start off with a small role, but certainly have the ability to increase that as time goes on. If Team Canada has any injuries to the other guys that are playing ahead of him to start with the tournament, uh, his role will certainly increase, and he's capable of taking that on. He's not the kind of player who gets rattled. He can actually stay focused when it matters most. Like I said, he's very smart, makes smooth decisions, and I think he'll have an opportunity to shine here. 
However, if Team Canada's defense plays well and stays healthy, I don't expect him to have quite as big a role as Lafreniere and Byfield. Now let's jump over and take a look at the dynamic duo here for Sweden, kicking things off, first of all, with left winger Lucas Raymond. Now there was some uncertainty to whether or not Raymond would be able to play at this tournament, but he's arrived with lots to prove. His numbers at the pro level with Furlunda of the SHL haven't really been exactly outstanding this year, but he's got a good chance to play against players his own age and certainly kind of rebuild his reputation a little bit heading into the draft. Now he's a very skilled forward and Sweden is really hoping that he can provide some much needed offense. Right now, Lucas Raymond is projected to likely go number three overall in the draft. Uh, he was at one point maybe considered a number two possibility, but he has slipped down to third with Byfield passing him by right now. But let's jump over here and take a look at another Swedish prospect who likely is going to play with Raymond, and that's Alexander Holtz, who's a right winger, who's another young forward with a lot of upside here for Team Sweden. He's got pretty good size, he's six feet tall, but 185 pounds, which he can certainly use to his advantage. He and Raymond are really good friends and they often play together on the same line during international competition. Now Holtz has a really good shot and explosive speed. Alexander Holtz is a first year pro playing in Sweden this year and I do think having him play on the same line with Raymond could certainly make for a very exciting dynamic duo in the forward group for Team Sweden who really needs to get more offense from some of these younger players heading into this tournament. So we'll see how Holtz and Raymond do but they're expected to play big roles for Sweden and see if they can get them to a medal. Next up, we have Russian goaltender Yaroslav Askarov. Now, Askarov is the type of goalie who's good enough to take Russia far, possibly even as far as the gold medal. I think the sky's the limit for this young goaltender. He's easily the top goaltender available for the 2020 NHL draft. He has very impressive numbers. He's currently playing with SKA at the VHL level, a league below the KHL, where he has a 2.38 goals against and a 9.22 save percentage in 16 games. Now, he does draw a lot of comparisons to a guy like Andre Vasilevsky of the Tampa Bay Lightning, who has been an absolutely outstanding stud NHL goaltender. If he can be anywhere near that good, uh, then he will have a solid NHL career ahead of them, but with the Russian team, the way they're structured, I do think that could go as far as he's able to carry them if he's able to be the starting goaltender. That's not a given that he's going to be the starter, but I do think uh, once he's getting a chance to play, that he very well could grab that role. I mean, Askarov, to me, could lead this team far in the tournament, but if he falters at all, then it very well could be the difference. In my opinion, when it comes to the Russian team, goaltending is going to be needed to be strong to take them far into the medal round. Lastly here, I want to take a look at Tim Stutzel of Germany, a left winger who's going to be a fun player to watch on a very fun German team. We've seen Team Germany come a long way with their hockey program here over the past couple of years in the past few tournaments. It's fun to see a lot of new players coming out of that country that are really solid, top-notch players. We've got a few top German-born players now around the NHL, which is certainly helping move this program along. Now, Stutzel is projected to probably be just outside the top five. Hard to say exactly where he's going to go in the draft but he very well could go in the top 10, top 15 for sure. I think is pretty much a given at this point. And playing in the type of tournament where you're going to see best on best of the world juniors, I think Stutzel has a major opportunity here to really stand out and really solidify himself as a higher draft pick in this draft. Now, now, of course, Team Germany is going to have some other solid prospects as well, like Mo Sider and Dominic Bach, but I think Stutzel is going to be one who's especially fun to watch just given the fact that he's not only trying to help his country win hockey games, but he's trying to solidify himself as a solid top 10 prospect for the upcoming 2020 NHL Draft. Now, so far this year, he's got five goals and 18 assists in 25 games playing pro hockey in the DEL. He's got good size, good skill, and he's going to be a very fun player to watch, and I highly recommend you check out his many games as you can for Team Germany. They could be a team who pull off a few upsets this year and certainly give teams a few scares at this tournament. I do expect them to probably do better than many do think. So those are your top seven 2020 NHL draft eligible prospects. I think that you should be looking out for. Now, another one who would have made this list would have been Finland's Anton Lundell. Unfortunately, he is injured and will not be participating in this tournament. Otherwise, he would have made this video and this list for sure. He's another great NHL prospect, and that is going to be a big blow for Finland, who's looking to repeat as the gold medalist in back-to-back -back World Junior Championships, which is not an easy task. 
which is something we haven't really seen in the last decade. Of course, if there's any other 2020 draft eligible prospects that you think we should be paying close attention to at this year's World Junior Championships, let me know down in the comments so we can discuss further. So once again, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. We'll be coming back to you here in a couple days with more information and recaps on the World Junior Championships. And we'll be getting back to NHL regular videos here probably around December 27th or 28th once the NHL schedule kicks back in and we have some NHL news to discuss. So stay tuned for that. Merry Merry Christmas, happy holidays, and I will catch you next time.